Good morning. Today, we're gonna discuss the black people problem. I put up a video last year about the wonderful A.G. Gaston, the guy who became a multi-millionaire when Emmett Till was killed for whistling at a white woman. And shout out to all of the new subscribers that came from that video. You guys get it? You guys understand where I was coming from? Today we're gonna have a conversation talking about the trash black people. See, that video pointed out that there is a lot of black folks who feel the same way that I do about the trash black folks. Now, we will get into the identification of the trash black folks in a minute, but I want to say, keep doing what you're doing for the progressive, nerdy black people. Let me say this again, because you guys know what it's like to be dealing with the predominant black culture. And I've had many people, it's like, you don't know what black culture is and all this other stuff. Really? If there is no predominant hood-based black culture, why would a black person that I have never met, never seen before, will feel comfortable calling me the N-word? Answer that question. That's what I mean. That's what I'm talking about. That's the issue that you could be anywhere in America and you run across another black person and they would feel comfortable calling you that. Once again, I will stand and I will state, I don't like the use of the N-word. I think it's stupid. I don't, I don't, I've never like, hey, my N, I don't, I don't speak like that. And what I have noticed is the progressive black folks don't speak that way either. It's a problem. Yesterday I was having a conversation with a young entrepreneur and uh, he said that was a problem. He's like, when someone comes in, uses it, that's a problem for me. And I was like, I, I understand why. See, there is a group of us, the progressive black folks who are trying to separate ourselves from the trash black culture. And it's very, very hard because you might be progressive, but your mama and your daddy might not be. You might be pro progressive, but your wife might not be. And I want to say something. Good Lord, some of the best pussy I've ever had was some of that ghetto ass pussy. It is, whoo, good Lord. You get that, but you also get all that other stuff with it that it has been years since I've had some ghetto trim. It has been, it's been a long, long time because you can get that moment of pleasure and then you will have all of these other issues. And I will discuss my last situation with the ghetto. Uh, she was a school teacher, but she was like 100% rep in the hood and there were so many hood attributes about this chick, it was just crazy. And that was one, the sex is what kept me around because the sex was the bomb. And that's just, that, that, that is like, ah. And I had to cut myself off from that, stop seeing her, stop having sex with her because Outside the bedroom, we just had a lot of problems. We just had a lot of problems because from a culture perspective, we were very dissimilar. Um, she was telling me about her family came in town and how 12 people were up in her one bedroom apartment. And I was like, no one got a hotel room out of 12 people? See, there are these hood attributes and the, you know, once again, Shout out to all of my progressive black folks who are trying to get away from that foolishness because I knew early on that I was different. When I was in the military and I started meeting all these girls from up top, from New York, Maryland. I gotta say the Maryland girls were pretty nice. They're, they were pretty nice. Uh, the New York girls, very, very gutter very 
very trashy, but the Maryland, Baltimore girls, the DC girls, they were a different breed. They were a different breed. These were the girls that had that long silky hair and had that way of speaking. It was really different. So I got along with them, but I didn't get along, you know, because the thing, I was so different. It, I was, you know, it would draw me to the New Jersey girls, the New York girls. And, but the, the ones I had the best relationship with the girls from the DC, Baltimore, Maryland area, which is totally different group. But once again, the trash black folks, because once again, uh, one thing that I have consistently saw in my car rental business, and I've had some progressive, nice, decent black folks rent cars from me. But one of the reasons, and I'm gonna do a video over here at Hustlers Kung Fu, I've shut the car business down. I'm out of that because of dealing with trash black folks. And I'm gonna give you the scenario of why I shut the car business down. Um, guy brings me back a BMW. It's not working, so I take it to my mechanic. Come to find out the engine is blown and he was driving the car without oil. The car tells you it needs oil tells you it needs oil that was the final straw because before that I had this black woman I'm a single mother with four children renting your car I don't have time to do this and do this she got mad because I cut the car off I used the GPS kill switch and I was just gonna go pick it up and the day after I cut the car off the GPS kill switch stopped working I couldn't locate the car and then we started to play this little game. Well, I had the car towed to a tow yard. Why would you have the car towed to a tow yard? That makes no sense. And then it, it was just lie after lie after lie after lie and the car is missing. Can't find it, police can't find it. Then the, the, the last lie was the police hauled it off. If the police had found the car, they would have informed the tow yard that it was a stolen car and then the tow yard would have contacted me. They wouldn't have told it off. So dealing with this type of behavior, because she kept mentioning she had to buy a tire. She had to buy a tire. So forget the fact that you ran over something, baby. No, 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 no. See, and this is a consistent problem that I have. I literally had 60 flat tires in my eight, nine months in the car rental business. And, um, it always became contentious because they would call me after they ran over something for me to fix the tire. And they got to the point like, I'm gonna tell you something, bro. I'm gonna tell you something, sis. If I gotta fix that tire, I am taking the car from you and I will never rent to you again. And there was a few people it's like, hey, come get your car. I would go get my car in the rental and fix the tire and rent it out to someone else. Then some people, they liked the car so much they actually came around and fixed the car. Because here's the thing. It isn't that these people don't have money. That's not the problem. The problem is they don't want to spend the money on things that they need to spend the money on. Now, if this was a football game or a party or some kind of trip, they would spend that money, no problem. But for something that they needed in their life, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. So after the blown engine after the stolen Range Rover, I was like, I'm done. Because uh, I was in a situation, and these were black people. These were not Asian people. They were not Hispanic people. They were not white people. These were black people stealing my cars, using my cars, not paying me and ignoring me and driving my cars, and ultimately getting arrested. I had 18 people arrested in eight months, 18. It got so bad that the Sandy Springs Police Department told me that they would not investigate because it was just too much. One week I had put in three stolen car reports, three, three. And like, you know, the GPS kill switches were supposed to be the, the save all. They were disabling, dismantling, getting around those suckers left and right. So this is one of the reasons I had to continue to file the police reports because they were disabling the GPS kill switches. 
which shows you the criminal intent. These folks were up to no good. They disabled the GPS because they knew they weren't going to have the money and they needed the car. So they were intentionally stealing from me. These were black people. And a lot of you like the way that he talks about black folks. I'm just sharing my honest experience. If you don't like the fact that I have enough intestinal fortitude to tell the truth here on the YouTube versus pretending that something like all my, these problems I had, one of the reasons I've sh is black folks. Black folks, 100%. So you cannot tell me that if I was having all of these good experiences, now I'm gonna tell you something that was really interesting when I came to Atlanta in 1988. Atlanta was a very different place. I remember rolling through the West End and there were all of these uh, booths and people selling stuff. There was love, there was the, the Muslims on the corner selling the final call. It was a very different place. Uh, back then, Atlanta was full of love. Back then, you didn't have black folks trying to get over on black folks the way that they do now. It didn't happen. You could literally go to the mall, meet a girl, talk to her, ask her on the date. If she had free time, go out that night. It was a totally, totally different world. Totally different world than what we have now, which is Trash Nation. And my contention is that there are more people in the predominant hood culture than there are progressive black folks. And I know some of you guys feel a little lonely because you know, you're just trying to do it the right way. Because one of the things I, I see, because if you didn't know, I was thinking about starting a credit repair agency and I've been doing a lot of research on that and I've been fixing people's credit. And bad credit is not a black folk thing. Uh, there's a lot of people, of many cultures have bad credit. But what you consistently see in terms of credit is a lot of black YouTubers. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. I'm just seeing that it's a, it's a hot thing because I'm about to tell you something. If I had started my car rental business on credit, I would be extremely screwed at the moment. See, there's this false assumption that, you know, starting a business, you, you just need funding. You just need funding. And once again, I'm not dissing anyone for doing what they're doing, but once again, like all my businesses that have been successful, I did not take out a loan. I didn't even use a credit card. I used cash. And then what I did is I ran it very lean and I did certain things until the cash flow got up. And to this date, I have not used a business loan or funding or even a credit card. Right now, I have like half a million dollars in personal credit and I got about 250,000 in business credit. And at the moment, my utilization on the personal side is 1% and my utilization on the business side is about 1%. So I have it, but I'm not using it. I want you to think, I, I have it, because one of the things that I've learned as an entrepreneur is you, you gotta get that cash flow. Like, if you start a business with credit and that business doesn't have cash flow to pay that credit back, now you have two problems. You have a business that is shut down. <laughs> now you've got uh, a problem with trying to pay this money back. That, that's a problem. So I know that the messaging, like once again with my video talking about investors don't make that much money, this is a similar thing. Like if you start a business, you want to work on the cash flow. <clears throat> but back to the main topic. One of the big issues that is happening today is messaging and culture. And the messaging is, like I said, back in the 80s, Atlanta was such a beautiful place. In the 90s, going to the Fox Theater to watch a show or to catch a concert. I remember going on a date who was my girlfriend, who later on became my, my wife, went to see in Vogue at the fabulous Fox Theater. Everyone was dressed 
up. Everyone was dressed up. I saw in Vogue, Freddie Jackson, and I saw a multitude of plays at the Fox Theater. It was, it was a different area because once again, this is something that's different. You would go out on a Saturday night, right? And what would you see in the 80s and 90s? You would see a bunch of couples. You go out now, what do you see? You see gangs of guys and gangs of girls. That's what you see. So the culture has de-evolved. Like, like I said, back in the day, I can ask a girl out on Monday. I wouldn't have to send her a confirmation text because we didn't even have text back then. We had pagers and stuff. And I would like call her Friday. I was supposed to pick her at 730. I would call her at seven. I'm like, I'm on my way. All right, I'll see you when you get here. It was, chicks weren't ghosting people, disappearing and flaking on it, it just didn't happen. And if someone, and I remember I had a situation where the chick did that and I told everyone what she did. And there was a guy that she liked and she tried to get with this guy. He said, you did this to my boy Glendon. I ain't messing with you. So your reputation could get you in trouble. Doesn't matter now. Doesn't matter now. Doesn't matter now. But once again, to the progressive black folks, I, I thank you for coming to the channel. I thank you for your well-constructed comments because we got to start a movement. Because um, one of the things that I am consistently seeing with the predominant trash hood culture is a lack of progression. I'm consistently seeing that these people are creating generational poverty, cycle after cycle after cycle after cycle of the same stuff. Keisha gets pregnant, Keisha has a little kid, Keisha becomes a grandmother in her 30s, the little kid, he goes on to have little kids, uh, marriage, and like, uh, I, I put in a video and I had some people push back on me because it used to be, if you know your history, that white women had kids out of wedlock more so than black women did. There was a point in America where white women were having kids out of wedlock and black women weren't. Black women were getting married. And you know, this is about my life insurance policy, which I got for someone I don't even know in my life. And I had people like, aren't you afraid of getting married? If you know history and you know economics, getting married is one of the wisest financial decisions that you can make. As a single man, because once again, I, I've, I've made some changes. Like right now, I've been working on um, doing some business stuff. So uh, there's one girl I'm dating, just one. And as a single man, the amount of money you spend dating can be enormous and as a married man since you're not dating you save so much more money plus you have a partner and you have an agenda and this is one thing that the ghetto trash black culture doesn't appreciate is marriage you know every time you know uh like one of the things i'm getting ready to do is to revamp um the men's channel and revamp the financial channel. I'm gonna work on that this month when I get around to it. But every time I bring up marriage, like, no, 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 I ain't getting married, no, I ain't getting married, no, 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 no. What you're gonna be is a lonely old man. Because here's the thing, that the trash, because uh, some people say it's a subculture. I don't think it's a subculture, I think that ghetto culture is the main black culture and believe it or not, progressive black folks such as myself and the people who subscribe to the AG Gaston video is the subculture. I know that sounds kind of crazy because we want to pretend that things are not as bad as they are because I've had many people like, this is the doom and gloom channel. And I'm like, so, you don't want me to tell you the truth. You want me to tell you beautiful lies so you can feel better about a false narrative. And one of the things I'm consistently seeing, 
And there's hope because there are more and more and more people coming to the progressive black folk side. And I did the video where we're talking about like a lot of these people became Republicans. And I'm gonna tell you why they became Republicans. The Republican party is racist, there's no doubt. But they can join a racist group and actually move ahead versus pairing with the predominant hood culture and sliding back down. There was a study done of middle-class black children. And if you're the offsprings of middle-class black parents, you have a 70% chance of going into poverty. Now, why is that important? Because typically the social economic status level that you're born into is usually the one that you die into. So typically if you were born with middle-class black parents, you should die as a middle-class black person. But the pervasive, um, erotic, seductive hood culture pulls a lot of these progressive, nerdy little black kids in and they will actually start acting stump, stupid and dumb so they can be, they can be down versus doing what their parents were doing. Like, I have some friends, both of them are PhDs, and um, they raised their, their kids. Private schools, Jack and Jill, Jocks and Jack and Jill, I think that was the organization. Uh, they did all that. Both of these parents were PhDs, making six figures, professional people. They raised their daughter who went to medical school and she became a doctor. And she got married and had kids. And she started getting some hood penis while she was married. Uh, I know the husband, we, we're friends, we talk, and he told me he found where she had got this dude a phone. This is a progressive this girl comes from a progressive west indian family phds and because she got some hood penis it blew her mind it blew her mind she had like three kids for her husband and she got this hood penis got this dude the phone start paying his bills start paying his bills because that hood penis was 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 best and it's been many years since i've talked to her because you know i talked to her she was a nerdy little kid and but once she got a taste of that hood penis she lost her mind and this is a product of a progressive well-educated i mean the blueprint was clear if she do these things and you know, fortunately for her, she's a doctor, so she makes like half a million a year. But she 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 dipping around with that hood penis. And last time I heard, it was an issue of baby boy. Dude, she bought this dude a car because she, you know, needed her car to get to work, and he was driving her car. This is a doctor that comes from a lineage like her uncle aced it maxed out the sats i mean these were her people and that seductive hood penis got in her and it made her lose her mind because uh my dude was telling me he was like she would like disappear she was doing all kinds of stuff hood penis is very potent very potent and I'm gonna tell you why hood penis is. And I'm about to go back to who I used to be. Before I became the dude that I am, I was broke. I was living in the boarding house. So whenever I got with a chick, that's the only thing I had was that penis. Hood penis, that's the only thing I had, that, that was it. So I became really, really good at dicking the girl down. Really, really good. Make them start speaking in tongues. I shaka 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 shaka. I, Cause that's the only thing that I had to offer was that penis. And it, it was like, I remember 
this one girl I met because I was living in the boarding house and um, she was doing you know she was an attorney she was an attorney and we went out to the movies and that night I got to put the penis on it and she's like boy what you got there make a girl lose her damn mind Jesus she was on the bed she was like what did you just do to me made her come like four times and she was like what is she couldn't believe it because she's like I wasn't gonna sleep with you but now I'm glad I did hood penis it's potent it's potent right and one of the things that I've come to learn from my experiences of going from being you know I was never a ghetto because even when I was living in the boarding house uh, they used to call me Mr. Officer because I used to shave because I was so dissimilar from everyone else around me right I remember this dude tried to fix me up with a with a werewolf he tried to fix me up with this girl who literally had a beard sideburns and a mustache she had a mustache and I was like and she wasn't cute either she had a nice body body was ridiculous but that mustache those sideburns and that little beard I couldn't do it <laughs> I couldn't do it I was like my dude why didn't you tell me she had a beard and a mustache and sideburns that ain't attractive it ain't her sideburns were thicker than mine so one of the things that I saw consistently living in the hood was I don't think that people feel that they're going to have a shot at a productive life. Hence the drugs, the uh, dangerous pathologies, and this large, once again, my argument is this segment of black America is the largest segment of America. It's not the smaller, it's not a subculture. And for all you folks who like, all you do is talk bad about black folks. If me sharing my accurate experiences with black folks is talking bad, more than likely, you're one of the people that I'm talking about. You're one of the people that is doing the stuff that I'm talking about. And this is why you're so upset. Because I've had people like lose it in the comments. All he does is talk bad about black folks. Get so upset because I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about your pathologies. I'm talking about your proclivities. I'm talking about all this bad stuff that you have because one of the things I consistently see with us is a lack of progression because what I feel is starting to happen is the progressive black folks have woken up. They're not waking up, they've woken up. And I see it in the comments, it's like, man, I thought I was crazy until I found you because a lot of progressive black folks, because like I said, the predominant hood culture is the largest segment of the black community. So the progressive black folks I think are coming here because they can find more progressive black folks to communicate with and to network with because there's a lot of us, there's a lot of us, but because we're overshadowed by the dominant hood culture, um, it, it makes it seem like there aren't as many of us as there really are. And people are starting to see this because I see the conversations that the progressive black folks are having. And one of the things, like uh, when I did my video about investing in Dave Ramsey's line to you, context, someone put in there, hey, me and my wife, she makes six figures and we've been doing it 26 years. Okay, six figures 26 years ago, was a significant sum of money. Six figures today, with the average house house price, 400,000. You know, like I said, when I talk about when I came to Atlanta, it was such a different period of time. It was a different black culture. Uh, literally, when I came to Atlanta, you could literally be out, meet some people, hook up, become friends, 
Next thing you know, you're going to the house party. Next, I mean, it was such a beautiful time. And this is something else too. There was a number of black bookstores in Atlanta back then. I haven't looked, but I don't know how many black bookstores there are now because there was a shrine, there was a shrine of the black Madonna. I think that's still open, I'm not sure. And you would go in there and you would meet some of the most intellectual, well thought, well spoken, well thought black folks. It was so easy to meet those type of black folks. It was so easy. Now everyone is on the social media vibe where it's kind of hard to hook up with these kind of people. So once again, you like right here, you know, the Institute of Economic Thought, I will be your portal for progressive black thought, which ain't about struggle love. I see so many channels on that struggle love vibe, you know, struggle love, you know, we, we gotta do what we gotta do to make it, man. We gotta put, we gotta use little baby Jojo's social security number to get this apartment, baby, because you know, that's what we gotta do. We gotta use all our resources and other type of foolishness, right? So one of the things is, as many of you, cause like there's like 30,000 new subscribers and the majority of you have come through the AG Gaston video. That just made my heart looks like, man, that, that's, cause you folks get it. Because one of the reasons, A.G. Gaston became a millionaire when Emmett Till was killed for whistling at a white woman. So racism is not a barrier to you getting money as proven by him. And some other things, because we're gonna be talking about how to get money and how to build real businesses. Because like I said, I'm gonna do a video probably sometime today on Hustlers Kung Fu going through all the reasons I am out of the car business. I am out of that. And it was my issues with the um, worthless people and the demo people. This is who I was running to. And I correctly projected that these issues were not gonna go away. They were gonna get worse because the economy is cooling off. And one of the things I've noticed is that I'll even kind of go into this a little bit because one of the things, once I made the decision I was out the business, once a car came back, I didn't rent it out because the depreciation is horrible. And then you have the uh, potential for accidents and damage. And what, as I was winding down, because currently I only have one car rented out. And the same thing happened even with less cars, late payments, a lot of late payments. And once again, I look at this because like, I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, I will tell you the truth about a business because there's a lot of YouTubers who will lie to you. And I kind of got a little sucked up into this because it was like, everyone's renting cars. It must be a good business. No, it isn't. It's a good business to talk about for YouTube to get views and YouTube money. But in practical application, the car rental business actually sucks. It's one of the worst businesses I've ever been a part of. And Typically, I, you know, years ago when I was in the storage auction business, I got into it because of my experience with JDA and selling that used furniture. So I need to find a source of used stuff because I knew that I could sell used stuff if I got it at the right price and make a good profit. So the car rental business is the only social media induced business I've ever started. And it was the biggest L that I've taken 20 years, 20 years, biggest L. Fortunately, due to the tax code, I'm not gonna lose any money. But for the eight months of hell that I went through, cause uh, I, I, I got my, I made $128,000 renting cars for eight months, right? I had $150,000 in car repairs, 150,000 in car repairs, plus insurance, plus my office rent. The, uh, my depreciation is gonna be about 150,000 for last year. So 
Due to the tax code, I'm not gonna lose money, but I damn sure didn't make any money. And I will outline all of my things about this because um, James Anderson, he left a comment and it seems that a lot of people are getting out of the car rental business for these issues that I will outline in that video, which these issues were 99% driven by black people. Wasn't white people, wasn't Asian people, it was mostly black people, mostly black people. And black folks, and this is, I made some errors. One of the last things you want to do is show up to a worthless person or a demo person picking up a rental car and be driving a, a bright red Porsche. That right there bit me in the butt so many times because it's like, oh, he got money. He could take the hit. This is how these people think. They don't think that, hey, I have this car. I'm using it. It's providing me a service. I should pay him. No, 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 no. Oh, he got money. Cool. He can subsidize my lifestyle. That's how these people think. They think like bitches. This is how they think. And one of the things that, you know, and I learned a whole bunch because I haven't dealt with a customer base like this ever, ever full of demo people, full of worthless people. Um, and it's going to get worse this year. You know, this is February, so I'm looking to figure out what the unemployment for January looked like. We're gonna see if the unemployment has stalled or is it going up or what was what's going on with that. But once again, uh, I'm gonna start some new training after Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, I've learned you can't compete with these football games. You cannot compete. So I'm going to launch this um, right after Super Bowl Sunday start launching this new training, this new portal. And it's going to be for you progressive black folks who want to get ahead, who want to build something, who want to build businesses. Because I got a video on uh, Hustlers Kung Fu talking about the truth about starting businesses. Um, talk about YouTubers will lie to you. They will lie all day. To the TikTokers, YouTube, they will straight up lie to you. It is not in their best interest to tell you the truth. Because when I do this video talking about why you, and the title of it is why you shouldn't rent your car on hire car. That's going to be the title because I could have been a hire car affiliate. And once I saw how much hassle and trouble this was, I didn't push my affiliate link. Why would I induce people to come into a burning house? Why would I? I mean, you know, money is nice, but I'm not going to lie to you. And I don't want and someone left a good comment. Left a great comment talking about you know, thank God he's telling the truth because I can go ahead and put up a false narrative and someone can liquidate their 401k to invest in this business and then ultimately they will fail. As a YouTuber, as a social media influencer, we have a lot of responsibility. And a lot of folks, they don't take that responsibility seriously. They will lie to you in a heartbeat to get the views, so I can get this YouTube money, and this YouTube money could be quite significant. Uh, last month, this channel made $10,000. Last month, uh, I did like, you can go to Social Blade and you can check it out. I did like 700,000 views. Did 10,000. Just talking about the economy and stuff. So if you're talking about how to make money, and this is why you see the content that you see, because it makes money, not because it's helpful. So I'm a little different because uh, I don't have to lie to you to make money because uh, most of my money doesn't come from YouTube. It comes from actually running a real business. So we're going to get into that. So there's going to be some new training. There's some new stuff we're going to get into. But yeah, there is a there is a black person problem. And as we, the progressive black folks who don't think it's cool to use the N word, as we start to network, get together, share, have conversations, we're gonna build a stronger black community within the black community. Because I don't feel that the predominant black culture is gonna disappear anytime soon. It is embedded. It is embedded in culture, it's embedded in music, it's embedded, like all the TV shows. Remember the 80s? Remember rock? Remember the Cosby's? 
Remember living, remember all of the positive black shows? What do we have now? Love and hip hop. If you compare the current lineup of black television shows to the Cosby show, Living Single, Rock, it's very, very different. Because they're appealing to that predominant, dominant black culture. That's why they're making these shows, because they know there's a huge audience for it. Huge, huge audience. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one. Let me know your thoughts, appealing, uh, opinions, and comments in the section with your wonderful, well-constructed comments. And I will see you guys in the next one.